Music, first of all, represents and mirrors the environment that it comes from. You know, some of the more famous people that migrated from the South that have been documented, people like Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf. They came from Mississippi playing blues at once upon a time they were playing acoustic blues because electricity was not in abundance. Then they had to merge with technology, if you will, and embrace these electric guitars that Gibson and that Fender had and these electric amplifiers in order to compete. I was born for the blues itself. It was the first thing that captured my imagination. It was the first thing that captured my attention. It was the first thing to embrace me and to love me and to accept me. Growing up in Bronzeville, it was really communal. We had everything that we needed in our neighborhood. Music was always in the air. I always say that um, my neighborhood was filled with uh, athletic activity, music activity, and gang activity. And everybody got along. It was the coolest time in the world for me to be growing up. Now, as I watch my big brothers play the blues and show me different things, I'm that old man now. And so I have a social responsibility to every kid, boy, girl, from every ethnic group that wants to play the blues. I saw a need for proper education for blues pedagogy. And so I created the blues camp. And I created the blues camp for kids that wanted to play the blues and had nowhere else to go. Musicians, you know, we're artists, and, and artists, we're always looked at as being weird when we're kids until we get, you know, when you get 20 years old or 25 years old and you're artists and say, man, that guy's cool, you know, but when you're coming up, it may not necessarily be popular.